Good afternoon. Um, this afternoon I'm going to demonstrate how to make a food desiccator. Uh, relatively easy to do. Really relying on a couple of uh, key parts such as this fan. Um, it's a 230 volt fan and in uh, the USA I obviously use 120 volts which um, you, can, you can get these kind of fans for different voltages. So the, the key components of this desiccator is the fan and then these little heater uh, boards. These are self-regulating so as the temperature gets close to um, the thermal equilibrium uh, the resistance actually uh, increases, reduces the current and it self-regulates. So it doesn't actually need any sort of uh, regulator to, to uh, use these particular heaters. So quite importantly is um, the box that's used for the food desiccator. So I've gone down to my local hardware store um, what you would have as a Home Depot or a builder's warehouse or a, in our case it's called Bunnings. I bought um, about a half a square meter of shade cloth which I'll demonstrate the need for a little bit later on. But yeah you can see a fairly sturdy box. Um, the side walls are quite thick. It can uh, take a little bit of uh, load uh, because we're going to basically mount the fans on the sides of this box. In this way and, and draw a draft right through the box so it needs to be relatively strong to, to be able to hold the fans they, um, they're not excessively heavy but they do um, put a bit of load on the side walls yeah. then the other thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating what I call airports now airports is basically um, where I've taken a template of the fan so basically got the aperture of the fan um, drawn out and on a piece of cardboard I've marked the holes so I can mark exactly in the box where I'm going to drill the holes for the fan but the internal hole is uh, the airport so that's actually the place where we're going to draw air through the box and um, fairly important in a food desiccator to get a lot of airflow through um, the unit and, and it's for this reason that I've actually selected two fans. Um, each fan has an airflow direction shown on the top. So basically we'll mount the one on the one side facing into the box and then we'll mount the other one on the other side to draw air and push it out of the box. So there'll be a positive pressure created by these uh, fans and therefore it's quite important that uh, when you select the box that you select one which has the capacity to uh, latch down the lid as this one does. So um, this, this was only a couple of dollars at, um, at my local hardware store, but as you can see you can latch down the lid very nicely and that will keep um, the air pressure uh, nicely pushing through the uh, fans rather than venting out uh, the lip here. The other thing that was quite um, useful and I really do recommend you do this if you can is to try and find a basket which will fit inside the desiccator and the reason for this basket is that you can take little paper clips and place it onto the um, crosswise yeah? and you can hang your food uh, from that and you can see that creates a, a lot of um, options in terms of what you're going to be able to hang in this uh, desiccator uh, you know, th and use the space quite wisely. Um, the other thing is you could put um, a bit of sh shade cloth down here and put some of the more um, juicy fruits uh, such as potentially banana down on this and draw air through this and it will actually dry the banana. So I do mention um, on my blog that you mix about 20% solution of uh, lemon juice with water and then you dip the banana into that and you can desiccate it and it tastes like banana it doesn't taste like um, you know it doesn't have a nutty flavor or anything like that so it comes out very very well so that's really the the main elements of uh, what we're going to be doing here so um, yeah without further ado I'm just going to get going and marking up the um, airports and um, making sure that uh, the fans are going to be answered the optimal 
height. We obviously don't want them to, to be in contact with, uh, with the basket, so they have to be a bit lower. Potentially, uh, about halfway down, I think, would be a useful um, place to, to monitor this. So one of the reasons why I thought about this um, desiccate is, you know, with all the climate change and all the issues around um, carbon emissions, one of the areas that um, we have a lot of emissions from is landfill, and that's because of uh, decaying and rotting food. So if we desiccate all our food, certainly we don't waste it, and um, we're then able to you know, consume it over long peri periods of time. So it just strikes me as a really good thing to do in terms of um, saving money, um, not wasting, and then um, you know, being able to do something good for the environment. So fairly useful I think to desiccate food and as you'll see by some of the um, meats etc that I desiccate um, it's a bit of a delicacy for for our family and um, you know we do it on a fairly regular basis I know hunters for example would also benefit from being able to desiccate their meat because uh, they tend to get a large quantity of, of meat at, at the same time it takes about two to three days to uh, get to a sealed outside of, of the meat. Um, in America it's called jerky, in South Africa it's called biltong, um, but it's really just effectively a cured, dried kind of meat, desiccated in this, this particular uh, box.